What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Just got over here to Mike's shop. We are working on my 532 Big Block Chevrolet and he is still working on his LS motor. Check this out guys. Comment, like, and subscribe if y'all want to support the channel. Go to turbojohnracing.com. Grab yourself some hats and t-shirts. We got new t-shirts coming out. It's pretty cool. I think you're going to like it. Appreciate it guys. All right guys. Well, it looks like we've not made much progress, but if you look, we have actually kind of made some progress here. Uh, luckily, we reached out to Holly. Holly was kind enough to sell us this bracket, and it works like gangbusters. This is a 36-1 wheel. Basically, this goes on zero like we had talked about, and then you put it on this line, the seventh tooth. Fits perfect. Now, uh, we got a mid plate going on here, a front plate, I'm sorry. So that quarter inch spacer right there is gonna come out and it's gonna be lined up exactly right. So the other thing we were work, wait, waiting on, a thread cert, uh, we got this put in. Um, it didn't really go way down in there as much as I had thought, but we tapped it, it's the thin one. So it's a 9 sixteenths, 9 sixteenths thread uh, and it was the coarse thread, 20, uh, 12 uh, pitch is what it goes in there, 7 sixteenths um, is what this size is and the bigger one is a 9 sixteenths. This one's gonna work, uh, it should work better. Uh, that was kind of kind of sketchy, because uh, of course it did not go all the way down in there flush. So we had to actually take the side grinder here and we ground this down. And of course there's, th this is, needs to be pretty flat, but there's also a copper head gasket here. So if it is a little protruding or a little down and it protrudes up a little bit, that will um, emboss into the copper gasket. So I think we'll be fine. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and stick this thing together get, and get the head back on it. And there's a chance we might have a full long block with heads and intake and oil pan tonight. That's my game plan anyway. Let me show you what Mike's got going on. So Mike, are you having fun out here today? I am not. He is not having fun. Let me show you why he's not having fun. So uh, this is the wrist pin. This is one of the rods. Uh, almost all of these are now probably ruin. See how thin that, that bushing is? The bushing is very, very thin. And I don't know, we still don't understand. We don't know if we got some spark knock, some detonation. The pistons, the tops of the pistons, I mean, they look phenomenal. There is nothing wrong with the top of the pistons. None of the spark plugs have had any issues, not a single one. Um, oil and wise, these, this, these are fed from oil from Top of the wrist pin. I mean, top of the. Uh, now you can't see them anymore. They're they're we're wore completely out. Right. As you go through that. It used to be right there. And the bushing has wore that. Uh, you know, it's clogged. Look up. at that. Yeah. So and see then it? yep, it completely. Wow. It, it has them from both. No, it only has one. Or has it got two? It's got one on either side. Okay. So I know some of the some pistons they have two, but this one's only got one on each side. So. uh that all that is is when the oil scrapes down the oil scrapes down off yep there you go Fit. yep so the oil scrapes that's when it scrapes the oil off the cylinder wall and so that's how it gets oil that's how it feeds it we talked about maybe some spark knot maybe some detonation but this thing man and if you look at this bushing that bushing has rotated in there almost 300 or 180 degrees. And that little hole on the top probably gets a little bit of splash oil in there too. That's right. I mean, it's not force fed. I mean, but we don't we don't really know. I mean, uh, you know, he's talked to several people. He's talked to Wiseco. He's talked to a couple engine builders. Uh, some of the engine builders are saying that, you know, it's probably spark knot that at some point has some detonation, even though we might not have seen it in the piston or on the, the plug. Uh, possible. Um, when you, the bearings look perfect in it. I mean, he's got the bearings out. The, like you can see the bearing, it's got some uh, metal uh, fragments in there from where it was, I mean, beating it out, but the actual, the bearing is in still good shape. So when you get spark knock, like I was saying, like in an aluminum rod, the, you, you don't have this bushing, you've got aluminum there and you'll kill this upper bearing. And when you look at that, if you think about like detonation and spark knock, if it does rattle anything real hard, then this is probably going to be the weakest link. Um, so uh, he's trying to figure out how he bought some stuff, but like like this is completely galled to the pist The pistons are basically junk, Mike. They're junk. Um, I mean, I don't know that you can get them out. And you're trying to salvage the rod because you can put new 
I peanut. Ordered, I ordered bushings. You can put new rods, bushings in the big end, in the small end, but we got to get it out. I mean, maybe, maybe the easiest thing to do if the pistons are junk is to just hammer, I mean, cut the piston, get the wrist pin, and then cut it best you can and then press it out. Although it still seems pretty free, it's probably wore it out. Right, but getting the pin out, That's the, the problem. bushing is coming with it. Right, and it's destroying the piston. It's destroying the piston. So uh, for all you folks out there, uh, they are junk to me. Just like the shit in there is junk to me. I will buy a different set of rods and they will not be a wise code boost line. <laughs> and and that's what I mean. Maybe I mean maybe we have. I know they say. What do they say? That rod's good for two thousand horsepower. Supposed to be. I mean, and I know some people. They. I mean, KC Max has got a big block Chevrolet. He had a steel rod and he has been broke one this weekend. But he's also leaning on it really hard this weekend. Uh, may, I mean, but they also they got a nine ninety pin, which is more surface area. This is only a nine twenty seven pin. Yeah, nine twenty seven tool steel upgrades. But he's going to that other. The new motor's got the same exact rods in it. Uh, that would have probably been good information to know prior to building that one. But you've already ordered it. You already paid for it. It's already, I mean, I'm gonna send it's, it. like it's already assembled. So he's over here putting this one together. And, you know, and it's, just, I mean, it's assembled properly. I mean, there's nothing wrong with the assembly. I mean, it is the same rods and everything up in there. Same. So. I, I heard uh, your wrist pin tolerances were too tight. I, I, heard, I heard this. I, it I seems heard, like it's all speculation. It's all speculation. Yeah, um, we don't know what the actual problem is. But the, the, what we're trying to solve is we don't want it to happen again. I don't want it to happen again. Right. And out of all the manufacturers that I've talked to parts-wise, you know, it's... It, uh, 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 it's like the converter and the thrust bearing and right, converter right. company blames the engine builder. The engine builder blames the converter. It's the same, same scenario. The same yeah. exact scenario. So anybody that's watching the video out of, you know, thousands of dollars in parts. Yeah, I may be a dummy, but oh, okay, I'm a dummy. So uh, yeah, we all are. I, I will give a shout out to BTR. Right. Because they took care of me on that brand new block. Because right. Because of that one. Right. Mistakes, mm -hmm. And then they took care of the Pro Charger. Right. Uh, for, or, excuse me, Pro Charger took care of the Pro Charger. And that's, you know, it's, it's racing. It's part of it. I mean, you know, you get stuff together, and, I mean, we ain't made many passes on it. Uh, game plan for tuning on this one, probably maybe a little bit more conservative on timing. I, I don't think it was a tune problem. Maybe, maybe a little fatter. I don't think it was either. But, I mean, that's the only thing that I can possibly – but I, but it doesn't show it in the pistons, and it doesn't show it on the plugs. The plugs have looked absolutely perfect every time. If you – People really want to know what detonation is. I get that box out over there. That's I'll right. show you what detonation it, it is. Kills it kills it, pistons. It kills pistons. I mean, it, it pops. Bearings. That's right. Uh, so those pistons don't have uh, – there's no marks on them. Right. You know, there's no marks in the cylinders. The, you know, the rings didn't get hot. You know, if, if you've got detonation, you know, the ring, the tensile strength on the rings are perfect. Right. So uh, – I mean, that's, that, you're right. The top ring turns into an S-shape. When you pull you, – I mean, you pull it off and it bends all the pieces. Bends out. The ring lands aren't lifted anywhere. Yeah, uh, you know, I, honestly, I think it's just the rod failure. I mean, it's possible. It's, I mean, maybe it was. And maybe, we'll, it, and, and if you know, here it is. On, be on video. <laughs> You're doing it, it again. Is. We're gonna run it, and we're gonna run it exactly the same way. And if it beats these ones out, well, guess what? We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. So, but he does have his game plan for this one now. Like he just said a minute ago, he's gonna get some different rods and different. He's gonna go with aluminum rod motor. Yeah, I'm gonna order the same pistons with an aluminum rod. What a, we'll do an aluminum rod this time. Right. Uh, nothing wrong with the cylinder bores. No, all that stuff's perfect. Uh, it's got like 25 passes on it. So uh, before I ruin a, this brand new block, right? Uh, you know, I'm not gonna put junky rods back in it. No, you know, it's not worth the, the risk. So I just buy new pistons, buy new rods, have it balanced again, uh, and then we'll assemble this motor. Yep. Uh, well, let's. Well, there you go. I mean, that's it. So yeah. now. Race car stuff, race car life. <laughs> I did find out on these uh, dark uh, LS Next Pro blocks, the priority main oiling on it is, which it doesn't say in the documentation, it's two separate circuits. Ah, uh, right. Uh, so maybe it was a uh, an oiling issue because I was running a high volume pump. So what the kind of and so they gave him a part number of the 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 pump that we probably should have in this one. A standard volume, higher pressure, just oh, a little bit higher pressure. 15% reduction. Oh, reduced pressure. Re reduced volume. Reduced volume, okay. The, he said the pressure, and he said you run as much damn pressure through this block all you want. But it's the volume. That, it's the volume that the block doesn't need to see because so, it stays in, 
when it pump, you use a high volume pump, it pumps everything out of the oil pan, puts it on the top of the motor, starves the bottom. And then you, so I would think you would see in, my thought process is that we would see that in an oil pressure drop. But I think what they're saying is that it is a, a oil splashing issue as well. Because I know we try to keep the crankshafts out of the oil for splashing and windage, but it is spinning in there. So if the, all the oil is in the top of the motor, then you're gonna have less splash up into the cylinder walls, up into the, you know, the rotating assembly, the stuff is, that is not. I mean, maybe, you know, we see all the time, like on the imports now, they have oilers, right? Piston oilers. And then they, um, some of the NASCAR stuff uses oilers where they have tubes sticking up. That the, They say it keeps it, uh, the, the piston cooler, but it's also got to lubricate that pin really well. I mean, but that's just hot. It's, it's, it's clearly it broke down to oil air at some point. There was, it was metal to metal. So, uh, I, you know, I, I can buy into the oil stuff. So okay, great. If I put the wrong pump on it, my bad. I'm buying rods and pistons. All right. mine. Uh, I'm, you know, I got the right pump according to DART. I've got the springs set the way, you know, that, that, that should be. So we'll put it together. We'll find out. We'll find out. All right, here we go. All right, boys, we got us an assembled long block over here. Uh, head stuff torqued down fine, didn't have no issues. My, my bolt hole there is, uh, my bolt is coming through. We did end up snipping those gaskets. You see how they snipped it there? There's a couple of people that said it, and I looked on Summit's website, and theirs actually comes snipped, so you don't have to take them off. And you see that one? So that one I did not snip down in there. So in order to get this head off, I'm gonna have to take that stud up. And then that's what it is. But uh, so these I recommend torquing down to 50. Now uh, I am missing the the washer. There's a bigger, uh, it's like a cast iron or steel. It's like a D shaped washer that is supposed to go between here and here. Uh, this thing's $130 from Summit or Jigs. And you can see clearly all I'm missing is those little pieces. Uh, probably at some point I'm gonna end up ordering that. Uh, but these things are not torqued down super, super hard. Uh, and it's got a good grip on it with that washer, but it's not all the way to the edge. I mean, I was going to do some custom filing and get everything done, like fit, but I didn't do that. So Mike's making progress over here too. Uh, so he has an assembled short block, but his has actually got the oil paint and everything on it. So he is, what did you decide you're going to use on your, your heads? Which heads are you going to use? I'm going to put the Frankenstein back on. Okay, so all they need, you see the one gasket, it's got a little bit of imprinting on the gasket, but it's super smooth. And the other hand didn't, didn't do anything. So that was, you know, a little my, weird. My guess is uh, that it had one, one or two little spots where piston contacted, and that's probably from the pins. Right. The bushing's gone, and it, it rattled the head maybe a little bit. Possibly, but it's super smooth. And you can see right here, there's on, all, on this side, on this head, and you see the piston barely grabbed it. So, I mean, it's a tight, it's a zero deck motor when you look at it. So the piston is at the top of the deck. You got, you know, I mean, it's just, that's what happens. Sometimes we have a zero deck motor. Uh, if you lose any clearance, then the clearance is clearance and it's, it's a problem. Clear. It'll self-clear. <laughs> it's right. It'll self-clear. So, uh, yeah, so uh, he's making some progress. So he's got to clean those. got to get the studs in it. And then he will be set. Uh, so just a little bit. I'm going to set my intake on mine real fast and uh, look at uh, clearance. Gosh, I don't know. Okay, yeah, hold on. Alright guys, well, we got closer. That's all we're going to get done tonight. The heads are officially torqued down. The, uh, they had a real thick gasket, the 120 thousandths gasket on it. We put a normal 60 thousandths on it. It's got a steel core in it, and that lined it up a little bit better. So maybe uh, on their other intake, they may have needed that to get it all to work. Uh, there again, we got the crank trigger stuff done. Lifters are in it. I did find me a set of stud girdles that are going on here. They'll be here tomorrow. Uh, Facebook Marketplace for the win. 
So I got those. Also got some studs for the headers. So those things were kind of expensive. Kind of pain in the butt putting in too because you got to screw them in, double nut it to get them all to go in. So you're good. We just set the depth on our crank trigger back here. Basically what we did, we loosened the collar up here. Uh, it had no gasket on it and then dropped it down in there. And then we, uh, with no gasket, tightened the collar down, put the gasket in it. And that's how much it pulled it up. That gasket is probably a hundred thousandths or so. Mike made some good progress. His is um, over there bagged up, ready to go. So yours, your plan this weekend is to get the new motor in the car. Saturday, drop it in, button it up, Sunday, crank it. And then maybe go test next Thursday at Galat. Test next Thursday and find out if we're going to tear some more rods. Oh up. my God, no, I hope not. <laughs> so he's got them all lubricated really good and making all the right things, the right choices. We thank you. Think they are. Uh, all we got left on mine is to put the rock arms on it, uh, put the intake on it. Uh, I always like to put the, the push rods and stuff in prior to bolting this on just because it's a little easier. I did get my new push rods. They came in. We got mainly their, uh, the 135 wall. That should all work good. Uh, we do have mismatched rock arms. I would love to put a set of jazzles or TNDs or a shaft mounts on it, but that's just not in the budget at the moment. So we're good to go. Mike, appreciate it. It's fun. Uh, one of the guys on the uh, channel made a comment about why I keep dorking around with these LSs. Right. Well, yes, okay, yes. I, I, I will get a combination that will work right eventually. At some point. <laughs> but I have gone through this same routine with small block Chevrolets. They all break. They all break. I don't care. It's small block Chevy, small block Ford, big blocks. They all break. And we show y'all, if you, you know, if you build a lot of motors and you race a ton, you understand. And if you're just getting into it, or maybe you don't, ha you haven't got to the point where you're making a thousand, 1200, 1500 horsepower, stuff breaks. It just does. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. And sometimes you have no idea, but luckily, you know what his broke, that's what we were just talking about. When he saw he was doing that preventative maintenance, if you would not have cut the oil filter apart, I'd have been running it. at some point soon, this, probably this one or one of these that was galling real bad and getting all that heat, it was going to ventilate the block. It was going, it will stop. And when it seizes up, then it's going to rip the pin out of the piston. And then, then another, you're another $4,000 block down the track. Then it's up to luck on how bad it tears it up. That's is right. it, does it, does it need a sleeve or does it, is the block trash? Well, now what about the crank? Is it destroyed the crank right now? I mean, I consider, I mean, you got lucky. I mean, you know, so was, that maintenance, I'm going to start cutting my oil filters apart more frequently and y'all are going to see on a video in a uh, couple of days, we're actually, uh, we're fixing to take the old paint off of Randy's and cut his filter apart too, because uh, the last pass we had, we had some spikes in the oil pressure. A, 20, a $20 oil filter cutter on Amazon it's the best thing save ever. your day. Yes. And, but the key thing is though, you've got to, you got to go with the information that it gives you. That's right. Cause we, I mean, how close were we to making passes last Thursday night? A lot. I mean, it was really close. And so luckily, you know, because it's hard, you know, you go, oh, maybe it's not that bad. And then you try to justify what you're seeing, right? Well, maybe this come from the last old blow, the blow up, the last time we tore it up. But luckily. And we're, um, and we're going to spray it too. <laughs> luckily, you were able to, that would have definitely made it ventilate faster. Yes. We, we don't like the unscheduled uh, rapid uh, unassembly, disassembly. We don't like that, but it happens. It, I mean, it does. It happens all the time. Ryan Mitchell just blowed his up last weekend at King of the South down there. Broke a rod, hung, hung a rod out, pulled something broke, broke a rod in half. I don't know how bad it tore it up, but he's trying to get to war in the woods. Hopefully, he'll get it there. All right, guys, comment, like, and subscribe. We'll see y'all later.